This episode is brought to you through a collaboration with the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C., and the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois. What do you think of when I say worm? My first thought is these guys, earthworms. The one most people are familiar with is Lumbricus terrestris, sometimes referred to as nightcrawlers. But I recently learned that there are around 6,000 named and described species of earthworm alone. This is just the tip of the worm iceberg. There's so much more to know about them, mostly because worm is a deceivingly misleading concept with no easy definition or description. In fact, there are perhaps as many as a few hundred thousand species of worms, and some of them are as different from one another as you or I are from a starfish. To help me answer the question, what is a worm, I came to the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History to talk with Dr. Anna Phillips, who's one of three curators of worms. We are here, what what collection are we in? We are in the invertebrate zoology collections at the National Museum of Natural History, the Smithsonian. This is a room that has everything from mollusks to arthropods and crustaceans to worms. So how many worms do you have in the collection here? I mean, the Smithsonian Museum has some of the largest collections in the world, if not the largest worm collection. We have at least 427,000 specimens of worms. We probably have more. So can you define what is a worm? There are things that tend to be long and thin and they don't have backbones. But there's a lot of things that can be like that that may not actually be worms. So it's a little bit of a difficult question. It's a general term that describes sort of a body plan. It may be surprising to some people, but there's many different kinds of worms out there. Turns out there's about 12 phyla of worms in the world. And so if you can imagine the taxonomic tree of life, I guess, what, it, what does it mean to be a, a separate phyla. So it goes from kingdom phyla, class order, family genus species. Phyla means that they're all within the animal kingdom and they all are very, very different from each other. So what phyla are people in? We're in chordata. Yes. So we are more closely related to squirrels and lizards and snakes. And fish. And fish than any of these worms are related to one another. Right. So can we talk about some of these different worms now that we sort of know that like worm, worm is like a catch-all phrase. Here we have a selection of some worms. Um, Some of these are the larger specimens. We have everything from some polychaetes. These are marine worms. And then we also have worms that live inside of vertebrates, like nematodes, tapeworms, some of the larval stages of of the the parasitic worms. Like this one, these weird balloon things. So these are larvae of tapeworms. Those are baby um, tapeworms. Yeah. <laughs> really cute. It's a little different because they have complex life cycles. Yeah. So they're going to pass through this larval stage um, on their way to being an adult in a different host. You wouldn't necessarily recognize that this worm looks very similar to this. Yeah. Like, I mean, this looks like some spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people compare it to pasta. <laughs> we probably shouldn't do that. We'll ruin pasta for people. Don't eat tapeworms. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Bad idea. Don't. Not a good not, not a good an look. approved weight loss method. What other worms are we talking about today? We got this guy. Yeah, this is one of my favorite specimens. Who's this? This is a, a giant leech. So this is the giant Amazonian leech. Wow. So you can guess where they live. Generally in the wild, they're a little smaller. Mm-hmm. Um, so this guy lived in a lab and had as much food as he wanted. Um, and when you say food, I mean, you're, are you putting kibble in its <laughs> tank? No, this one feeds on blood. We affectionately call this leech Grandma Moses because she is quite large. How long did she live in the lab? I don't know, but there's a very famous picture of a famous leech biologist with Grandma Moses laying on his arm. I, you know, I really feel like I've met a, a celebrity leech today. And, and their part, what kind of worm? are they? They are in the phylum Annelida. So leeches, their closest relatives are earthworms. They look a little different to a scientist because we know certain characters to look for, namely because they have that blood feeding nature, Mm -hmm. whereas earthworms are not. But one of the things that makes earthworms and leeches similar to each other is that they are hermaphrodites. So they have both sexes at one time. Oh. Whereas the next closest relatives out, the polychaetes, so like your marine worms, the bristle worms. Gotcha. Many of those are separate sexes. Gotcha. How how does one collect leeches? Depends on which kind of leech you're going for. Gotcha. So my research was with medicinal leeches that like to feed on humans. That involves going out into places where you expect to find leeches, so like lakes and ponds and streams, and roll up your pants legs and wade in, and you make a little bit of movement. Yeah. (laughs) You do the leech dance, as I like to say. Really? Yeah. Is there there an actual movement? Yeah, you want to make ripples in the water. Okay. And so the leeches can feel the movement. 
So if the leech has come up... So there's choreography to this. Yes. So, so you, you can do synchronize like, your le leech dance. You do the leech so dance. So you're both moving at the same time, and then you both stop. And you wait for the leeches to attach. We're wait it's like waiting for but the then, face to drop. So then you have to pull one leg up at a time and examine and see if there are leeches like, on each leg. Really slow? Yeah. And of course, you're standing in mud and rocks and you're trying to keep your balance. So it's a very active sport. I'm, I'm so <laughs> tempted to try this the next time <laughs> I'm in a swampy, freshwater environment. You should come out sometime. I can show you where to find leeches. Yeah, we'll do the leech dance. Yeah, together. in our yoga moves. This is so <laughs> awesome. So when you talk about the number of specimens that are in the collection, are they all preserved in alcohol like this, in jars? Another way of preserving worms is, especially for the very small ones, are best shown on glass slides. Because of the 12 phyla of worms that we have in our collection here, um, many of them are very small. Yeah. So these are the charismatic megafauna of the worm world. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. And for that, we have the biggest worm I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> this is, I think, the largest worm in our collection. This is what we call super worm. So this worm was collected in the Caribbean, and the scientist um, who collected it saw a worm coming out of a coral reef. And so it was really big, and he grabbed it. But what a lot of these worms will do is when they feel endangered, they will release part of their body. Oh my goodness, that, yeah. it must be and like he, five or six feet long. Yes. And this isn't even the whole worm. No. We don't know how long the part was that got away. How does the worm have any business being that large? <laughs> Just imagine what it eats. So you mentioned that there are 12 different phyla of worms. How are there so many different kinds? How were they able to diversify so much? Worms in general, these phyla are very old groups in terms of the history of life and the history of animal life. When you're that old, there's many different environments that they've been able to get into and, and diversify and specialize in. So we have worms that live in the ocean. We have worms that live in freshwater. Obviously worms that live on land because they're in the soil like earthworms, even worms that live inside of vertebrates. So just about anywhere you can think about there's probably a worm living there. They've been able to colonize virtually every environment on the planet. So there's lots of diversity out there that we haven't been able to collect yet, or that we have collected, but we haven't described. So do you know how many different described worm species there are? So at this point, just doing some rough calculations, it seems like there's around 66,000 species of worms that are described. That are already described? Right. 66,000. Right. There could be more than 250,000 species of worms that are waiting to be described. What? We need more worm scientists. There are so, we need so <laughs> many worm scientists. There's, that's a lot of work that has to be done. Yeah. And I think it's, it's so... Pretty. It's yeah. pretty daunting. And it's, it's, well, it's amazing if you think about worm diversity in comparison to like vertebrate diversity. Like how many mammal species are there? There's maybe eight or 9,000 species of mammals. Just eight or 9,000. And you're talking about a quarter of a million different species of worms. Yeah. I think everybody should be a worm scientist. <laughs> You'll never get all the work done otherwise. We need help. <laughs> yeah. Come help Anna. Yeah. Here I am, leeches. Yeah. And then you gotta stop. And then you gotta stop. And then you have to, have to pull out one leg and look carefully and see if you can see leeches on it. Leeches. And if you do, then you pull them off. Leeches, leeches, leeches. Yes, you grab all the leeches. This is me at the club. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I like dabbing. Is that what people say? <laughs> It still has brains on it.